All right, George, um, what's up? All right. So I wanted to get your uh, your insider advice about a recent hand that I played. Okay. And we were, we were playing a 5-10 hold'em slash 5-5 PLO round-by-round round game. Okay. And it had a mandatory $25 button straddle for every round. Okay. And 100% matched the stack. So over the course of the night, the game had gotten pretty deep. And in this hand... Uh, the hand itself, I guess I can kind of just speed speed forward because it's not really the interesting part. So I've got clean, clean, nine, seven, rainbow, and I'm in the cutoff. We go to the flop six ways. Somebody had raised it to 100, so there's $100 or $600 in the pot. Mm -hmm. And flop comes, ace, ace, clean. Checks to me. So I've you have, got queens full. So you got queen, I check. So you have pocket queens, right? It's ace ace queen. You have pocket queens in PLO. Correct. Okay. Yes. Queen queen nine seven rainbow is okay. my hand. Yep. Uh, the board is ace, ace ace queen rainbow. Okay. Uh, checks to me. I check. And the button, uh, he pops it. Okay. 600. Okay. Now some, some background about the button. In the area that I play, he is earned him, he has earned himself a reputation for some people would probably describe it a little bit worse than I ha would say, but we'll just call him uh, a scumbag. <laughs> okay. Well, we all know them. We all know those types. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a home game, by the way. Uh, is this in a home game or at a casino? It's in a. We'll call it a. It's not the casinos in in Central Ohio are closed. So it's all either poker clubs or semi-private okay. home games, we'll call it. Okay. So it gets and, checked to him and he pots it, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, fold, folds to me and so he the pot was 600, so he bet 600. Yep. I cover him. He has somewhere in the neighborhood of, we'll say, 38 to 4,200. Okay. Uh, and I cover. Mm-hmm. So I think for a second, and I decide that they don't really ever pot ace-queen like this. Mm -hmm. So I think he's probably got some sort of ace. And I just decide to kind of uh, just go with the hand, and it's the coin flips slightly in my favor. So I repot it. By the way, just uh, just because I don't, this is just a funny scenario because I don't play a ton of PLO. I don't know this off the top of my head. What's the uh, what are the odds with bottom full against trip aces with uh, three live cards? Would you say? Um, I'm I'm about fifty four, fifty five percent somewhere in that range. Oh, that's all. Wow, that's I thought it would yeah. be more, I thought it would be more than that. Um, no, assuming he's got three unique cards in addition to the ace in his hand, it's the reason why close to a coin the reason why I bring this up is because I played a lot of big O right before COVID, especially and. I've played a lot of Big O in the past, but when you just continue to play it hand after hand, the reason why in Big O, which of course is five card, whether it's high, low, yep. or high, the reason why pairs are so bad, especially low pairs, is that you are a dog with bottoms full against trips with four cards, with four side cards. So I was just kind of interested to know in PLO. I thought it would be more like 60-40. But okay, so you're just going to get it in with this guy. You Hero check raises pot. Right? Yeah, yeah. Out yeah. of position, I just decided to go with it. I didn't want to really have to right. put any pressure on myself to evaluate mm -hmm. uh, on the turn. So yeah. I pot, he snap calls, yep. and the turn is a queen. Okay. So I, <laughs> so I think you have the best and, hand here now, right? Because he's not potting pocket yeah, aces. Yeah. yeah, if he's got aces, uh, good game. Yeah, so you have queen, <laughs> queen, queen, nine, seven. The flop is ace, ace, queen, and you basically check pot, get it in with the guy on the button. The turn's a queen, so it's ace, ace, queen, queen. Okay, so you got quads. Yeah. Okay. Now, I guess some other some other relevant information, too, is he has a tendency when he's up to go completely lockdown mode. Like, literally, we'll turn on a sports game and play 2% VPIP for the rest of the night. Okay. On the flip side, when he's stuck, he will go crazy. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, we I've know seen people like that. Twenty buy-ins in a night. Right. Just yeah. So this on this night, he's down probably four or five buy-ins. Okay. So he could have an ace here, which is what I expect. He could also have some sort of a wrap, etc. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I I shoved the rest on the turn, which was like fourteen hundred ish. 
Okay. And he snap calls. Okay. And he says once or twice, which he always does and all in hands. And uh, I just show him my hand. I said, are you live? Can you beat, can you beat it? I show him quads. So he and asks you, so he one- says, he says once or twice, you don't say anything, but you say, are you even, are you even live? Right? Yeah. I just, I show him my hand and I say, can you beat it? Well, he's live if he has an ace though, right? Yeah. Which is what I expected. And I okay. expected yeah. him to say, if I hit quads then, and in uh-huh. this type of scenario, I don't always run it once or twice in general. I just like to mix it up. But in this type of scenario where I can effectively free roll and never lose, I would have I would have ran twice if he would have said so, if uh-huh. he would have said he has an ace. Well, I mean, how, how does he not have an ace? He called your check pot and you moved on the turn and he called, right? You know, you know, I expect him to have an ace here a lot, but again, he's uh, he was stuck a, a lot and uh, he could have had king jack ten or something a small percentage of the time for a rack. Okay. Okay. All right. So I, I don't expect him to have King Jack 10. I expect yeah. him to have the eight. Okay. So, so, you, we'll so you say, okay. So you turn your hand over, you say, are you live? And, and he says, Oh my God. And just tosses his hand four or five feet in the air. He's in the one seat. It lands face down in the well, probably a foot away from me in the nine seat. Okay. So I just, I pull my bet back. I assume his hand's dead. So you think he's like surrendering? And, uh, he's basically why, mocking his hand. Is, he's surrendering, surrendering his hand, right? That's how I read it in, in the moment. So he throw. I'm on, on the screen. He throws his cards up, and they land like in the dealer's well. Like he's basically folding his hand. They land in the well, face down. Okay. So all four cards landed face down. Yep. I can't see any of the cards. Yep. I think the hand's over. Mm-hmm. Um. I, I'm just going to say maybe the dealer, because there was a bet and a call, he just completed the action and turned out the river. And Oh, man. I think course, I might know where this is going. <laughs> of course. The only reason we're talking now is the river's an ace. Okay. And immediately the player in seat one uh, tries to retrieve his hand from the well. Re- he reaches across from the dealer and – starts to grab his cards and I question, I said, isn't the hand dead? Yeah. And all hell breaks loose. Oh uh, boy. He, he does, <laughs> he does <laughs> retrieve his oh, cards. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> he does retrieve his cards and he flips over ace king for quads. Uh-huh. Um, the, and so this pot is what, like eight thousand dollars, right? Eighty five hundred, something like that? Yeah. It's uh it's somewhere between eight and nine thousand. So um, this is in a card club. What is who's the person that's going to make the decision on this? Just out of curiosity, is there like a floor man? Uh, so there, there is a floor person that is not actively playing any of the games. Okay. So they, there, there is a designated floor person um, available to for rulings like this. So before you tell me what happens, this is sort of what my take is on the situation. Now I have been somebody. That has said, and I get a lot of flack from people constantly, so much flack that I think I might acknowledge that the rules might be different in different, I mean, I have acknowledged the rules are different in different areas, right? But I have always said that the muck is not an end-all, be-all dead zone, like people think. Like people are, it touched the muck, it's dead, it's dead, it touched the muck. Where, where I cut my teeth in California, hands are retrievable in the sense that if the dealer mocked your hand by accident and he pushes them in and they touch the muck, but they can easily be retrieved, the hand is retrievable, okay? So just because cards hit the muck, they are retrievable. However, you are in a situation where the cards didn't hit the muck, but I don't think it should be retrievable. The guy's hands clearly, he clearly surrendered his hand. And what you'll see a lot from old timers especially when I was coming up a lot in Omaha 8, where I was like by far the youngest person at the table, old timers will get mad, especially at the high stakes, and they'll be like, dealer, if the guy mucks his hand, muck his hand. So this is a situation where the dealer should have mucked the hand. The guy surrendered his hand, right? He surrendered his hand, but the dealer didn't put the cards in the muck because basically what you said, right? Because he probably got frazzled by the bet and the call, put the card out. The proper etiquette is if 
the guy who surrendered his hand and the dealer is like, is that a muck? And the guy, and he mucked the hand. Yeah. The card doesn't even need to be put out. Right. The guy already mucked his hand. Um, so if it was me and I was ruling that, like I was making the ruling or what I, again, like, I don't know what the rules are per se, like in different scenarios, but I like to look at nuance. I like to look at, in, you know, intent. I, I think every situation is different. I think his hand should be dead. So I'm telling you that I've seen hands that should be live that have hit the muck. I think they should absolutely be live and retrievable. Here, this hand hasn't hit the muck and I think it should be dead. So, you know, he went after it, he got it and he turned it over. I don't know if that necessarily matters, but again, like who, know, who knows how they're gonna rule I can tell you that's how they should rule. That's a lot of money in the pot too. And if you're telling me he's a scumbag, yeah, I might put up a huge, huge stink. Yeah, yeah. It was a, uh, it was definitely a big pot. Uh, that that night, the game was probably the biggest the clubs ever played. There was a lot of money on the table. And uh, so back to the back to the pot. I immediately questioned, is the hand dead? Mm -hmm. And the dealer said, yes, it's in the well face down it's dead yeah and the one seat the villain scumbag whatever you want to say he goes ballistic he's trying to plead his case really to anybody that will listen uh, mm -hmm. he calls for the floor immediately and like five other players from the table they all like start interjecting they're all saying that the hand's dead blah 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 to the point where i just i'm now quiet because i know the floor is coming and it's already a hectic situation enough, so I just kind of sit there. Uh, the floor comes over. He asks the dealer what happened, and the dealer's trying to say what happened. The villain continuously interjects and interrupting him and is, like, basically, like, begging. <laughs> I'm sure it was a mess, but, yeah, so what ended up happening? So uh, the floor ruled basically made two rulings. Uh, the first is that the hand's dead and they awarded me the pot. Okay. Then he said, I'm going to go review the video footage and if everything happened as if, as the dealer said, the, the hand will be awarded to me. What? Uh, so... What do you, the, the hand will be awarded to who? I'm sorry. Let me, re let me put up. Uh, so initial ruling is the hand was mucked. Uh-huh. Pot is awarded to me. Right. Um, he, the floor then says they're going to go review, review the video video footage mm -hmm. to verify that everything the dealer said is what actually happened. Okay. So, and I'm about I'm about 95 percent sure that they're going to rule in my favor. Uh, the only thing that I can think of is because the cards were distinguishable from the rest of the muck that the hand might be retrievable. So 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 he's uh, going but, to review. So he's awarding the hand to you, but he's going to review to make sure it's exactly the way that the dealer said. So did he put the pot aside? The, they, the, the pot? They shipped, me the, they shipped me the full pot, but I kept it separate from my stack. <laughs> well, that's number one amateur hour right there. Because that if they have something that's they're not going to rule you 100% your favor, that you, that you shouldn't be physically shipped the pot because you can see what kind of issues that's going to cause. Okay, so they go back and review the tape. What happened? Uh, before they... Before they make a, a ruling, because I can, I, I play at this place a lot. I can tell the floor is kind of uncomfortable with what he's about, about to do. Um, I I spoke up to the villain and I said, I don't want to hear anything but a yes or no. Right now, it, the offer that I'm making you is I will chop this pot with you 50-50. Who's making that offer? The 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 floor guy? No, I made I made the offer to the player. Oh, okay. And he, like, starts to ramble about something, and I was like, I basically just said, shut up. Yes or no, chop the pot. Mm -hmm. And then he, he snap accepted the, the chop. So then the floor guy never came back and did anything? Um, the floor guy, I, I basically called the floor back and said, we've settled it privately. We don't need a room. I don't know if I would have done that if I were you, to be honest with you. I mean, again, this is one of these situations where – you know, and it's just what is reality. Like I might, 
handle it differently depending on who the player was. If he was a scumbag and he didn't like it and I thought it was going to be ruled in my favor, I wouldn't do that. I mean, the guy mucked his hand, right? Now, if he's like some sort of crazy action player that dumps like tens of thousands of dollars in the game and he's the reason why the game goes, and if he's not going to go, if he gets mad and he takes a couple weeks off and the game's never going to go, then maybe you do offer him that deal, right? But it doesn't yeah, sound like that, that he's like that type of guy, though, if he goes into lockdown mode. Well, it, it, it's basically all in the first 20 minutes for him. If he, uh, if he doubles up early, you might as well give him a rack and uh, try to make him leave. But uh, if he loses a stack early, then uh, 15, 20K can be in play. So why did, let I, me ask you, why did you do that? Well, for two reasons. I wanted. To, I thought that if the floor ruled in my favor, that he might never come back to this to this game. Okay. Yeah. So, from, right. From a long term perspective, I thought it might right. be the wise thing. For sure. To sure. Further action. Right. Right. Well, um, I mean, if that's your, I if I mean, if that, that's why I asked you. I mean, if that's your reason, if he's that good of a player for the game, okay. But I wouldn't do that if he was just some average, like sort of neutral player. You know what I mean? I mean, it's kind of the same thing too. Like you sometimes will see situations where maybe you're up against an older guy. It's usually sometimes people will email and they get mad when I say I have ageism, right? Like I'll say older guy, older guy. Like I've seen this before and I would do this too. It actually hasn't happened to me. You get an old fish, right? That dumps a bunch of money into the game. And like one time he moves all in, right? With his hand, whatever it's hold them or PLO. And uh, it's obvious that he's misread his hand for whatever reason, like he wasn't bluffing, like he thought he had a six and it was a nine, some shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Like it's obvious that he's misread his hand and he's moved all in. I have seen people give the money back. That is something that I would consider doing. I've seen it before, but it has to be the right type of player though, right? Two, um, again, like if you're dealing with a small player pool and this guy drives the game, and, you know, you think it's going to be good for the game? Sure, I can see it, but I wouldn't just do it based upon a neutral thing. But again, I, I appreciate you bringing that out so that I could go over my muck rant, where the cards, when they touch the muck, aren't dead. This guy's cards didn't touch the muck, and they should be dead. Thank you for the call. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Thank you. Hey guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out CrushLivePoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA200, click on the link right there.